Hello, I'm Jana, and welcome back to the Crafty Corner. This week over at the Punky Junkie Inspiration Avenue, we are creating to the theme of paints and pastes. So we're going to be having some fun with distressed paint and some distressed textures. If you'd like to see exactly what we're going to be using here today, go ahead and pause here. All right, let's head over to the Crafty Corner. So today is all about textures and paste. So I thought we would be trying out a couple of different paint and texture techniques. The first thing I want to do is something very textural. I am thinking summer right now, so when I think summer, I think the ocean. So we're going to be making an ocean themed card, and then we're going to look at making a summer themed tag. So. What we are going to do is we're going to take some texture paste and I'm just going to put that right here. And we are actually going to color this with distress paint. This is a bit different from what we typically do, but paint can work to color texture paste. We don't want a lot because if we put too much in, it's going to completely change the consistency of the paste. But a drop or two should give us a lovely color. There we go, just like that. We're gonna blend that in. Just taking a palette knife and smushing that. There we go. I'll get a little bit more contrast after this is dry, but I wanted a nice base color of a blue. Okay. So we're just gonna take this and we're going to apply it to the card. And I'm going for a lots of texture with this. So just take that, we'll scrape that on. There. Okay. So we've got our texture paste on here. Now I want to add more texture to this. Like I want to kind of raise that up. I don't want it to be even. I want it to be textured. There we go. Just taking the palette knife and kind of carving that up a little bit. All right. Ooh. That is definitely going to be really textured. I like that. Let's add a little bit more. Let's bring that along down there. Okay. So by using the edge of the palette knife and kind of going in different directions, we've been able to get this really neat layer of texture going. So we're going to set this aside. We're just going to let it dry. We've definitely got some ocean vibes going on here, which I am absolutely loving. There we go. So just set that off to the side. Now my estimation on drying time for this is probably going to be upwards to 45 minutes. I did lay this on here relatively thick. And with the addition of the distress paint, I'm not quite sure what it did to the whole viscosity. So conservative estimate is probably 45 minutes for this to completely dry. But in the meantime, we've got plenty of other things to do. So now let's go ahead and clean up our workspace. And we're going to do a few tag techniques. Okay, there we go. Nice clean spot. Now let's bring in a tag. So one of my favorite techniques is paint marbling. And for that, we're going to have three different blues to play with. So what I do want to do first is cover my work surface. I'm bringing in the larger craft mat because we're going to be doing a dip and dry. Let's just that. Okay, good. So what we're going to do is add some drops of paint on here. I've got some chipped sapphire to start with. And we've got some tumbled glass. Oh, this one's completely brand new. All right. Open that up. There we go. Give that a good quick shake. And add some tumble glass. 
And then I have some broken china. Okay, next I want to give this a good spritz. And I'm also going to spritz our tag. This is a standard eight mixed media tag. Got that, and now we're just going to swipe and see what we get. This is one of those you get what you get and you don't throw a fit types of moments. So, ooh, interesting. Definitely got some good color going on here. Thought we'd have a little bit more color than that with the contrasting blues, but you know what? That's okay. This makes a great base layer tag. So again, we'll take this, set aside, and let it dry. You could dry this with a heat tool, but I can't today because I had mine kerpluddle yesterday. So we're going to let this air dry. But honestly, air drying, you can also get some really cool patterns and movements going on. So we'll set that off to the side. Again, we'll give our work surface a good quick clean and move on to the next technique. The next thing that I want to do is a bit of stenciling. Now, distress paint will not become activated again after it is put down on the surface. So once it is down, it's going to stay down. So if we combine distress paints with distress inks, we're going to be able to get some pretty interesting things happening. So what I want to do is a little bit of painting and then we will go in and add some stenciling. So I'm just going to take a little bit of the tumble glass and we'll mix that with the broken china and I'm just going for kind of a brushed type looked for the tag. Okay. So I've got one of the Distress Collage brushes and we're just going to dry brush this on. I'm kind of going for some paint texture. There we go. All right. And I do want the brush marks. Not always something I'm a fan of, but in this case, I think the brush marks are going to look really good. Okay. There we go. Oh, I think I want just a little bit more of the broken china. All right. That is good. So we'll let this dry and then we'll come right back and do some stenciling and have a little bit more of a play with some of the texture paste. In this case, we'll be bringing in some sparkle. Okay, so this is all nice and dry. Now let's go in with a stencil. So the stencil that I'm going to pull in, it's one of the mini ones. This is THMS59 and this is from this year's Stampers Anonymous Spring Release. Okay, so we're gonna take that and we're gonna take a little bit of the chip sapphire. I'm just gonna put a little bit down onto the mat and I'm going to use a sponge to dab that onto the stencil. Okay, so just take that and dab. Okay, that's pretty good. All right, now we're gonna just move that stencil over and we'll do a little bit more stenciling over here. So I'm just taking that sponge and we're just tapping that through the stencil. All right, good. So now I just want to quickly clean my stencil off. Just a little bit of water, gotta put the towel, good. 
And next, we're going to take some sparkle and go through that. And after, we're going to do a little bit of inking. All right, so I've got one of these mini little sample jars of sparkle. Might as well use that up. Okay, take that. We've got our stencil. There, and I don't want this to really line up. I want this to be a little bit offset. That way we're getting some visual interest. Oh, you know what? I guess it is gonna line up. That's fine, it will look good. So I'm just spreading that through. Now, sparkle is very, very light. And I find it spreads almost like melted butter. So you don't need a lot and it's pretty easy to get through the stencil. All right, and let's have just a little bit more right here. Okay. So just finishing that up, there we go. All right, and then we will need to let this dry. Estimation on this, it is very, very humid today. I would say perhaps 30 minutes for dry time. Okay, the tag that we did the little marbling with, it's dry now. So I do wanna add another layer. I kind of lost some of the lighter colors when the chip sapphire overpowered it. Love the chip sapphire, but need a little bit more contrast. So we're gonna do a second swipe. Okay, and let's see how that goes. So spritzing both the card and the work surface. Ooh, okay. Definitely interesting. Okay. There we go. I'm liking that a lot better. So again, I'll just set this aside to dry and we'll take a look later on. Here is the dried tag. And this would be the Distress Paint Marbling Technique. We've got three different colors going on here. We used Broken China, Tumbled Glass, and Chipped Sapphire. Now we're going to be working a little bit with some stenciling. Now, the really cool thing about Distress Paint is that it dries completely and it is waterproof. So no matter how much water we add to this after the fact, we are not going to be reactivating those paints. Those paints are there and they are not moving. So I do want to do a little bit of the inky dip technique before we get into the stenciling. And we're gonna do that with a complementary color. We're going to be using some peacock feathers and a dash of scorched timber. So I've just put those right down onto the media mat and we're going to give those a good spritz. And we're going to dip and dry. So let's just do an initial dip and let's see what we get. Okay, so as you can tell, the ink is here, it's moving. We're gonna go ahead and put things on fast forward as we dip and dry. Okay, and this would be our dipped tag. So this is Distress Ink over Distress Paint, and we've got some of that wonderful inky splotchiness going on here with all our little drips. Okay, now on to a little bit of stenciling. So I decided to bring in one of my favorite stencils. This is some lovely roses, and this is THS162. So what we are going to do here will be to ink right through this. So I've got ink pad, I've got a blending tool with some dome foam. Okay, let's add those roses in. 
So I'm just going to hold this in place and we'll just use the blending tool right over the top. Okay, so just making sure that's all nicely inked. That's looking pretty good. Okay, so let's go ahead and lift. There we go. And now we have some lovely stenciling added to our tag and I would call that complete. Now we were working on another tag earlier that we included some paste with and this was some of the sparkle paste. So we'd dry brush this tag with distress paint. Then we stenciled with some chip sapphire distress paint and then we added a layer of sparkle paste. And here's the dried sparkle. We have some directly over the paint and we have some without the paint. But either way, we have some lovely sparkle on this tag. So that's one way that we can mix and match distress paints and pastes. Now let's go back to that first piece of watercolor cardstock that we worked with some paste and paint on. So just to review, this is distress texture paste matte mixed with a teeny dash of broken china. And we used a palette knife to get these fantastic waves. Now we're going to do a couple of things to this. First, I want to add a little bit of shine to this. And to do that, we're going to be pulling in some metallic flakes. But first, we need to add a little bit of the gilding glue in order to get those flakes to stick. So what I'm going to do is put a little bit of the glue off to the side, and I'm going to take a small piece of sponge, and I'm going to dab the glue onto the high points of these waves. So I've got my little sponge, we've got some glue, I'm just going to very gently brush that over the top of the waves because we don't want all of this to be shiny. We just want a few parts to be shiny. And I just want to kind of try to catch those high points on the waves. Okay. That's going to look good. Okay. So I think we've got the high points and just tilting this to make sure. All right, so that part needs to dry, but while we wait for that to dry, I want to add some color up here for the sky. And I think Broken China will work out for this. There we go, we've got that. And we're going to add some water, because I want that to spread. And I'm just going to take my finger and move some of that paint around. This is going to flow with the water. Okay, so we're just kind of doing a wash for the sky. That's good. That's going to look really good. All right. And the next thing I want to do is add a little bit more color down here. And to do that, I'm going to be pulling in a Distress Mica Spray Stain. And I'm going to want the spray juniper berry. So we're going to dry this section off first and then I'm going to do a little spritz down here before we get into the gilding flakes. Okay, let's go ahead and add a little spritz of juniper berry. So we're going to give that a really good shake. Okay, and I'm just going to use my hand to kind of mask that off and just a couple of little spritzes and I'm going to use some water to move that around. There we go. Ooh, that turned out really well. And then I'll just dry this off very quickly and do a little dabbing. Okay, this is now dry. We have our mica spray stain on here and that is looking good. The glue is also dry, it's nice and tacky. So that means that we are ready to add some of the foil flakes. So I'm just gonna pull in this jar. This is some Finnebar flakes. And I'm just gonna pull out the silver pieces. And we will use the dry brush to tap this down onto the card. Anywhere that there is adhesive, the gilding flakes are going to stick. And anything that doesn't have adhesive, it's just going to brush right off. So I like using the dry brush for this because it helps move the gilding flakes around and get us great coverage. So we're just going to brush that on until we have as much shine as we want. 
Keep grabbing a few pieces. And I'm just using a brush to kind of poke that into the texture paste. Okay. So I'm just going to keep brushing that around. Make sure that all the spots that have a little bit of stick get some of that lovely silver. Mm, I'm loving that so much. Okay, let's see. Need a little bit a little bit more. We'll put that over here. Let's get that copper off. We don't want that. Okay, I think I just have one more spot right down here. Okay. Ooh, that is very shiny. Love it. Okay, let's take a closer look at that. Ooh, that really does look like ocean waves now. That makes me so happy. Ooh, very cool. All right, so the last thing that I want to do is to add a bit of white, and I think I will do that with embossing powder. Let's see here. There, I've got some white embossing powder, and I'm going to use the embossing dabber. I'm going to try to make some clouds near the top and maybe just a touch of ocean wave over here. So, Let's see how that works. So with embossing ink, if you tilt it, then you know that you've got ink down. There we go. All right, let's go ahead and try this. Okay, then we're just gonna carefully dump that back in here. Ooh. That came out better than I expected. Very good. And I want just a little bit of kind of like ocean spray. Yeah, just like that. Okay. All right. So I'm going to quickly emboss this and then we'll come back and take a look. Okay. To finish off this card, we are going to be pulling in some stickers from the Tim Holtz Clipping Sticker Book from Ideology. So I decided to go with some of these. A strange and wonderful place glittering in the sun. I think that works out really well. And you know what? I want to add just a couple of little birds in here and I can do that with a brush marker. So let's add in a couple of birds. Why not? Perfect. Okay, so I call that card done. This is definitely very different from other cards I've done in the past. This is focusing a lot on texture and mm, this is where I really wish we had feel vision because this feels really good. It's very cool with the texture texture paste. Okay, so let's just take a quick little recap of what we've done today with paint and paste. So. The first technique that we used was using texture paste and altering it with some distress paint to get these fantastic textured waves. And we also did a little bit of a distress paint wash in the background. Then we played with some dry brushing and stenciling. And here we used the Distress Ranger Glitter Paste. And this is oh so sparkly. And after that, we also did the dip and dry technique, and we even paired Distress Paint with Distress Ink, which is a fun combination. We did some Distress Paint marbling in the background, then we did some dip and dry over the top with Distress Inks, and to finish it off, we did a little bit more stenciling with 
Distress Inks Peacock Feathers. So these are just a few ideas of how we can use our paints and paste in combination or on their own to create a textured feature. Thank you so much for joining me here today at the Crafty Corner for Paints and Pastes. Until next time, happy crafting. <laughs>